In this video, we will talk about PICV valves. PICV stands for Pressure Independent Control Valve. It is a two-in-one valve which combines the functionality of a two-way control valve and a balancing valve. Control valve functionality is used to control the water flow based on the cooling or heating demand, while the balancing functionality regulates and maintains constant differential pressure across the valve which results in a constant flow without any fluctuations. Before going into more details about PICV, let's first understand why it should be used in our chilled water or hot water circuits. Consider a simple chilled water circuit which is serving two cooling coils. Initially, both motorized valves are open and the water is flowing through both coils. If cooling demand is not required for one of the coil, thermostat or DDC will sense it and it will close the motorized valve. As you can see here that motorized valve is closed for one of the coil. As one of the valve is closed, the differential pressure across the other valve will increase. This increase in pressure will increase the water flow through the second coil. Increased chilled water flow through this coil will result in more cooling than the required, resulting in lowering of supply and return air temperatures for this specific air handling unit. When thermostat or DDC sense this increase of cooling, it will reduce the valve opening. In this way, due to variation in system pressure, either due to opening or closing of a two-way valve, or due to the speed change of the pump VFD, valve and actuator would be moving a lot, resulting in early failure of valve and actuators. Also, increase of water flow than the desired value results in a bad temperature control. In such case, PICV valves would be helpful as they maintain desired constant flow irrespective of changes in the system pressure. PICVs comes in different sizes and shapes depending on their application, but functionality of all of them is almost same. Let's take a smaller version of a PICV to understand about its parts. Here we have inlet for the PICV valve where water would be entering. Then we have the outlet. A arrow on the valve is representing the direction of water flow. Here is the main body of the PICV. Then we have pressure measuring ports. These are used to measure the differential pressure across the PICV. We will discuss it later that why we measure this pressure. Here is a knob which is used to set the maximum flow rate through the PICV. Also a motorized actuator can be mounted on this PICV. Here is how a PICV looks like from inside. As we discussed earlier, PICV is a combination of two valves inside one body. On top, we have a two-way control valve which controls the water flow rate using an actuator. And downside, we have a differential pressure control valve which consists of a rolling diaphragm which is counteracted by a spring. This spring moves up or down in response to changes in differential pressure and maintains a constant differential pressure across the control valve to ensure a constant flow irrespective of pressure changes in the system. On right side, we have shown symbolic representation of a PICV showing two valves inside a PICV. Here A represents the control valve which controls the flow using an actuator, while B shows the balancing valve which regulates the differential pressure across the control valve. Here P1 is the upstream pressure of the valve, P2 is the intermediate pressure and P3 is the downstream pressure of the PICV valve. P2 minus P3 is the differential pressure drop across the control valve while P1 minus P3 is the differential pressure drop across the complete valve. Function of a PICV is to maintain a constant differential pressure across the control valve part which is delta PI. In a in response to any variations in delta P, which is the differential pressure across the complete PICV. Water flow through a control valve is represented by this formula. From this formula, it is clear that if flow coefficient CV is constant, then the flow would change with the change in delta P. So our goal is to maintain constant delta P across the control valve in order to maintain constant flow for a specific valve opening position, which is controlled by the actuator. For this task, our balancing valve comes into action and the spring moves upward or downward with variations in pressure across the PICV and maintain constant delta P across the control valve section inside the PIV. 
In this way, we achieve our desired constant flow through the valve. Now, as delta P is constant, so flow can be varied by opening or closing the bore size of the valve using an actuator. This opening or closing of the bore changes the flow coefficient of the control valve, resulting in a desired varied flow which is required as per our temperature requirements. Each PICV is rated for a particular maximum flow value. So you must select a valve which is capable to withstand the maximum flow requirement of your application. For example, if you are selecting PICV for an AHU application and it requires a maximum flow rate of 5 GPM, then the PICV shall be selected which have the maximum flow rate 5 or more than 5. If you have selected a valve with the particular maximum flow value say 5.3 GPM as you can see on your screen, and now you want to reduce or limit the maximum flow rate of this valve due to any reason either you want to use this PICV for another application or the valve which you purchased it, its maximum flow rate is more than the design value of your AHU or FCU. This can be done by using the knob on the PICV valve as you can see here that we have 10 number or steps mentioned on this knob. Each number represents 10% of the maximum flow value. You can see this inside a table here. If we set this knob on 10, then the flow would be equal to the G max, which is the maximum flow rate. If we set this number to 9, then it, its maximum flow rate would be 90% of the rated maximum flow rate. In this way, we can adjust or limit the maximum flow rate of the PICV during testing and commissioning using this knob. Now once the maximum flow rate is adjusted, flow rate through the PICV can be controlled using a motorized valve actuator as we discussed earlier. Actuator will move the valve stem up or downward and will control the flow rate by changing the bore cross section of the plug inside. Using the actuator we can control the flow from zero up to the maximum adjusted flow rate. For example, if flow rate is adjusted to 60% of the rated value, then actuator can control flow from 0 up to this value. Here is a graph which is showing relationship between delta P and the flow through a PICV at a particular setting of the flow. As you can see, the flow is constant above a particular minimum value of delta P. This minimum value is known as the startup pressure. Startup pressure is required for a PICV to function properly. If delta P is less than this starter pressure, then the spring inside the PICV would always be extended and the PICV will function as a normal control valve. Starter pressure value also depends on the maximum flow setting which you set using a knob. Lowering the maximum flow setting lowers the starter pressure. Similarly, there is a particular maximum delta P value above which the spring would fully compress and above this delta P value, PICV will not maintain constant flow. This range between starter pressure and the maximum delta P is known as the operating range of the PICV. You can find values of this range in data sheet of a particular PICV you are using. After installation and setting of the maximum flow rate, differential pressure shall be checked across the PICV using a digital manometer to ensure that it is functioning properly. If measured delta P value is within the operating range, it means PICV is functioning properly. If delta P value is out of the operating range, then it means there is something wrong and your PICV will not maintain constant flow through it. You must rectify the issue to bring the delta P within this range. In the end of video, let's discuss about advantages of a PICV. PICV helps us uh, for a precise temperature control which results in improved comfort level inside the buildings. Also it provides dynamic system balancing, no water balancing is required if we are using PICV valves. In case of normal two-way valves, system is balanced at the rated flow rate. When system is working at partial loads, the system get out of balance, while in case of PICV, there is a dynamic balancing and say, uh, valves are balancing itself at all values of delta P. It also increases actuator and valve life due to less movements in the valve. Using PICV also improves the chill water delta T 
so it helps us to reduce the uh, low delta t syndrome issue using picvs also helps us to uh, reduce the energy consumptions in the chilled water systems